Okay, everybody. Well, thank you for joining our webinar today. My name is Alex Oliver, and I'm a financial advisor with First National Corporation. Uh, we are doing our third webinar in the financial boot camp series with Schwartz and Schwartz accountants here uh, during the tax season, trying to give a little bit more financial knowledge uh, for your interests. And uh, we're doing this here in the middle of March or end of March, I should say, uh, right in the middle of our quarantine coronavirus lockdown. So hopefully everybody is uh, staying home and safe and healthy. Uh, certainly retirement plans for a small business owner are one of the last things you may be thinking about at this time, but still wanted to go forward with this webinar and give you some information for when the time does come to evaluate that. Uh, certainly a lot of questions around retirement plans. We're gonna talk about four different kinds for this webinar. And just to give you a little bit of perspective on my background, I have two designations here that I just want to explain briefly. Uh, I'm a certified financial planner, which uh, means that I work with a lot of um, families and small business owners around their comprehensive financial plan, which involves their income tax plan, their investments, their insurance, their estate planning, et cetera. So essentially being the you know, financial quarterback for the clients that I have. And then my other designation uh, is a chartered retirement plan specialist. So this has helped me to learn about all the ins and the outs of the variety of defined contribution and defined benefit plans that businesses can put in. And so that allows me to have a really interesting perspective. I would say most of my clients are small business owners with under 25 employees. And so I'm, I'm pretty in tune with the kinds of retirement plans that those people should be paying attention to. And so with this presentation, I wanna be going through the business owner's perspective as to why they set up a retirement plan. I uh, look at a cash, uh, excuse me, a, a cost benefit analysis to putting that in place and hopefully help you decide that this makes sense for your overall personal financial plan as well. And just to give you some background on that, that really is our niche here. So First National Corporation located on the South Shore in Rockland, Massachusetts, where what's called a registered investment advisor Important to understand that means we're a completely independent company. I don't work for a Fidelity or a Charles Schwab or a John Hancock or a Mass Mutual. We use all of those providers for a variety of different things as far as custodians or investment companies, mutual funds, things of that nature. But we're able to act in the best interests of our clients as a fiduciary. So the legal definition of a fiduciary, meaning that we're looking at the best interests of our, of our client situation. And so, uh, two sides to our business there, the wealth management practice, that's where my CFP designation comes into play. And then the retirement planning practice, that's where my chartered retirement plans um, certification comes into play. Again, as I mentioned, this is our third of four webinars. So uh, previously this year, we did a, a stock market in 2020 webinar, which seems very out of date here on March 25th. Uh, but you can go back and watch that one for laughs, if you will. Uh, it certainly didn't anticipate what happened over the last month and a half. Uh, we did do a webinar last month about health savings accounts, which I think is a uh, great thing to consider. Again, if you're a business owner, you may offer that as far as your uh, health benefit package and uh, could be another way of lowering your overall tax burden. Today, we're doing the retirement plans. And then next month, we'll be doing how to fire part two. FIRE is becoming financially independent and retiring early. So if you're trying to retire at age 45 or 50 or 55, we did a webinar on that last fall uh, in regards to getting to that point. Now we're going to do part two of that, which is how to actually make your money last for 40 or 50 years and uh, you know manage the taxes and investment ramifications around an early retirement. All these webinars can be found on schwartzaccountants.com slash events slash bootcamp. And just to give an idea here, we've been doing these for a few years now. So all those YouTube recordings are listed here. So not just the ones that I've mentioned, but we've also got student loans on there. We've got different estate planning strategies. We've got social security topics, uh, all sorts of different things. This one will go up there as well. Uh, so feel free to check those out. Again, those are YouTube links. So you don't have to sign up for anything extra. You can just view them at your, dis at your um, disposal. And uh, feel free to put me on one and a half or two times speed to really ramp it up and get through all of those topics. Uh, a little disclosure here. So obviously we wanna make sure that you consult your own advisor. Uh, we hope to become all, your advisor at some point if we are you know, developing enough expertise, but if you don't end up working with First National Corporation, make sure you advise somebody that can really evaluate your situation. A lot of the things I'll be talking about today are really high level general topics. And I wouldn't want you to take that and run with that on your own without getting some professional advice. So. 
Just make sure you uh, really do your due diligence here. Okay, so as we go through retirement plans, uh, if you're coming from a larger hospital or whatnot, you're already familiar with what these are likely and how they generally work, and maybe some of the benefits around putting those in place for you and your employees. But what I wanna make sure I do with this webinar today is look at it from you, the business owner's perspective, and really making sure that you know, we answer the number one question that is always asked to me, which is how much is this gonna cost me? You know, when you're a small business owner, you have a lot of things going on, a lot of expenses, maybe even some turnover in your employee ranks. There's just a lot of areas that are, that are happening here. And I realize a retirement plan is just one of many benefits and, and many aspects of running your business. So always the big question that's asked is, is this gonna cost me a lot of money? And that can be very difficult when you're in your first one, two or three years. And so I totally understand that. And I, I wanna make sure I go through this webinar by going through a cost benefit analysis and helping you to understand that the tax savings behind putting a retirement plan in place for you, the business owner, in many cases are actually going to outweigh the cost to actually administer the plan and give your employees a match, okay? And so a lot of accountants will actually phrase it this way to their, um, to their clients, which is that it might actually be costing you money to not have the retirement plan in place. So again, as we'll go through here, you know, some of these retirement plans are free to set up. Some of them might cost a thousand or two thousand dollars, which again may have be why you've put it off before. You didn't know exactly what those costs were. Uh, but be, once we outline the tax benefits for you, the business owner, you might actually see that you want to be setting this up sooner than you would otherwise thought. And not just for business owners, but for anybody, when I'm going through a financial plan with them, I'm trying to explain to them that when you're bringing in income, you have to decide where that money is going to go. And obviously, number bucket number one up here, your after-tax profit. You know, this is the reason, a big reason why we get into business is to be able to uh, grow our business and reap the benefits of, of having a profitable business. Uh, we have operational expenses that are just part of running the business, whether that's um, equipment or rental or fees or things like that. We have employees that we have to compensate to help run our business. And then we've got good old Uncle Sam. That's a, another bucket here. And with these retirement plans, we're actually trying to increase these first three buckets. I've got a bigger up arrow here because we want to bring more money to you after tax, most importantly. Our operational expenses are likely going to go up a little bit because we have to pay someone to administer this 401k plan. The employee compensation is likely to go up a little bit because we have to give matching contributions. But again, the big benefit here behind the retirement plan is that less money is going to the federal and state governments. And from a high level, I've always looked at the tax code as a level of incentives. The governments are trying to tell us to do something uh, with our money. And in this place, in this case, you know, when you look at retirement plans, 20 or 30 years ago, a lot of companies might have offered pension plans. Uh, Social Security used to replace a higher amount of our wages than they do today. Um, as far as that now goes, the, the government really only offers, say, fifteen to $30,000 worth of annual income from Social Security. That's definitely not going to replace most people's income. So instead, we've put a lot of effort to now say we want people to take this upon themselves to save for their own retirement. And so when we talk about tax breaks, actually retirement plans are one of the biggest places that you're going to get a very easy tax break by just putting money from one pocket into the other. And I'm going to outline that for you today uh, with our financial analysis. Now, you know, obviously there are other benefits to putting the retirement plan in place. And I want to just make sure I at least acknowledge those. Uh, certainly when we're hiring and trying to retain employees, if we are a dental office and all of the other dental offices in our area all offer a retirement plan and we do not, you know, that's going to be something that gets a knock against us and maybe not make our office as um, appealing as our competitors uh, because some of those employees and especially if they're high earning employees they may want a place to be able to make pre-tax deferrals this is the only place that they actually would be able to defer their income and lower their own tax bill okay so that's an important part of this and then as you start to have a, an overall compensation plan for your employees you're not just giving them a salary you know there is a dollar value benefit to giving them health insurance for example uh, dental insurance, for example, 
And then if you are giving them uh, matching contributions, which you don't necessarily have to do, which we'll get into, but if you are giving them matching contributions, it's a way for you to give them more money while avoiding payroll taxes that you would otherwise have to pay by giving them a wage or a salary, okay? So there are other benefits to the retirement plan just beyond your own financial um, personal means. But again, for the today, I'm gonna focus on your own personal situation to make sure that it makes sense from that regards, okay? And I will say that as we go through this presentation, as I work with a business owner, I'm always trying to make it as cheap or less expensive as possible, meaning it's gonna be less restrictive as possible. As I go through this, you're actually able to give higher matches or give more benefits to your employees if you would like to. But again, I'm always trying to keep your pocket in mind before setting this up. So today, we're going to discuss simple IRAs, safe harbor 401k plans, profit sharing plans, and cash balance plans. And that's essentially in that order, the evolution from a small business that's starting out in year one to a business that's been around for 20 or 25 years and getting close to retirement. These are the four retirement plans that I see most used for businesses that have under 25 employees. Uh, a brief note on these other plans, you might've heard of a SEP IRA. That would be typically if you're only a sole proprietor, you have no employees in your business, you might've set up an IRA, a SEP IRA, excuse me. You might've eventually migrated to a solo 401k, which allows you the same benefit. It's you as your own employee, but you now are able to make higher contributions to yourself. So again, maybe you've migrated from that, but now those two plans are just too expensive to maintain once you have employee number two or employee number three. So you have to migrate away from those eventually. We're also not gonna to talk too much about the traditional 401k plan. So a traditional 401k plan, again, you're likely very familiar with that or a 403b plan, which is used in you know, hot businesses with many employees, 200 to 5,000 employees. Those kinds of plans are going to make a lot of sense. In a traditional 401k, you actually don't have to offer any matching structure at all. You know, you can literally match 0% of what people are putting in there. But you, the note up here is that we're going to be talking about safe harbor 401k plans because in the businesses that I typically work with, uh, the business owner is typically making much more than the rank and file employees. So if the business owner is making $200,000 per year and the employees are making $50,000 per year, there are compliance tests that go into a 401k plan, and we'll touch on those very briefly, but the compliance tests make sure, and these come from the IRS, make sure that we're not favoring the business owner to an extreme degree over the rank and file employees. So they have what's called an average deferral percentage, an average contribution percentage, basically saying that the highly compensated employee, which might be you, the business owner, actually can't contribute a amount that's higher than 2% over what the rank and file employees are actually contributing, which in a small business with four or five employees, typically the business owner is going to maximize their contribution and the rank and file employees may not actually contribute at all. And that would actually fail a test for compliance purposes in the traditional 401k. So the safe harbor 401k, safe harbor means that we're actually gonna give our employees a match of some sort. I'm gonna talk about that. It's usually three or 4%. And we're gonna give them a match and that allows us to bypass those compliance tests because we've offered that match. And because of that reason, we won't be talking about specifically the traditional 401k. There are some other defined benefit plans where instead of making contributions, you're defining what the benefit will be in retirement, but that's just usually way too much of a liability for a small business owner. The exception to that being this cash balance plan that we're gonna talk about, which is basically a mix of a contribution and defined benefit plan. And again, I'll talk about that as we go on here. Um, as we try to, and get, again, make sure that your pocket is considered here, keep in mind as we go through these four retirement plans that there are some startup tax credits that are available to you. Uh, which actually have become even more generous with the SECURE Act that was passed in December of 2019. And the way that these read are that essentially, if you start up a retirement plan, if you don't have one today, you will get a tax credit of $250 per non-highly compensated employee that's covered by the plan. And a non-highly compensated employee 
is defined as someone who is making less than $130,000 and they own, you know, they do not own any part of the company, okay? So that credit can be no less than $500 and no more than $5,000 and those occur for the first three years. So if you have four employees that are gonna be part of this plan and they're not highly compensated, you're gonna get $250 per employee, so a $1,000 credit right there, right off the bat. So if your overall tax liability is $50,000, you're going to get now instead of a tax liability of fifty thousand, it'll be forty nine thousand. So that's a that's a great benefit right from the get go. And then you have a choice if you want to put your employees into what's called automatic enrollment. This basically means that uh, unless they opt out of the plan, they might start to defer some of their own money themselves. So say one percent of their salary. And again, this is just an incentive that's offered by the government because we want people to save for their retirement. If you do elect for automatic enrollment, there's another tax credit available to you, which is $500 for the first three years of your retirement plan that, that has it. And this is also, if you already have a retirement plan, you can now put automatic enrollment in place, and for the next three years, you'll get this tax credit, okay? So just consider those things as we go along here and we talk about the cost of retirement plans because that right there might wipe out the startup costs that we're gonna talk about, okay. So let's, before we get into the plans, make sure we understand exactly what the tax benefits are behind a retirement plan. Because what we're trying to do here is we're trying to, when we put money into our own 401k plan or our simple IRA, we're trying to avoid paying income taxes today while we're making money. And we want to take that money out when we're 65 or 70 years old, once we're retired, at a much lower tax bracket. And so you'll see in some of my examples today, that a lot of our business owners might end up here in the 35% uh, tax bracket. So, you know, if you're making $250,000, basically we all work on a progressive tax system. So that first uh, roughly $10,000, we're gonna get taxed at 10%. And then for this range here, we're gonna get taxed at 12%. But the last dollars that we earn are getting taxed at that 35% rate. Again, this is, this is a single filer. And these are the numbers for a married filing jointly filer. So if I'm in that 35% bracket, as this graph over here is going to display, and I make a contribution to my retirement plan, I avoid taxes at my income tax bracket today. And then when I retire, this is going through a $100,000 retirement withdrawal rate. When I retire, we're going to fill these lower buckets. And this year, there's a standard deduction of 24,000. So for the first 24 grand that we take out of our retirement plan, we pay 0% in taxes, okay? And then the next little bit, we will pay 10%. The next little bit, we pay 12%. And essentially, what most what happens with most retirees is that effectively, they will pay about 7 to 10% in taxes in those withdrawals if they're taking somewhere around $100,000 out per year, okay? So I call it tax arbitrage in this upper right-hand corner because we're just putting money from our business checking account to our 401k. We can't touch it until we're 59 and a half, age 59 and a half, but we get to save a lot on taxes there. And that's a really important concept to understand as we go through these examples. Okay, so let's start going through this. So the simple IRA. Simple IRA is exactly as it sounds. It's a government plan that's supposed to be very simple and almost no cost to even put this kind of a plan in place. So we're gonna go through pros and cons on each of these kinds of plans. So let's start with the pro side. Pro side is that, really no administration costs. So, you know, I'm a financial advisor. My job here for my clients is I actually set up the retirement plans and I'm completely agnostic as to where I set them up. Uh, but we typically are setting them up at uh, Charles Schwab and Fidelity. There's no administration costs on either of those two platforms for having a simple IRA. The only uh, fee for having that is my advisory fee because we are the fiduciary. We're hired to manage the investments and take legal liability away from you. Uh, at least share that liability so that way your participants, you're not actually managing the investments for your participants. Uh, that's something that you definitely don't wanna do. So you hire an advisor to do that, but the advisory fee actually comes out of participant accounts. So with a simple IRA, you're actually not paying anything. You're not actually writing a check for setting this up. So I would really look at this as almost a no cost plan to set up. And when we set them up at Schwab and Fidelity, we're able to use very low cost investment options. Right now we use what are called ETFs that have very low expense ratios. 
They have no trading fees. So again, keeping costs low is a really big part of the simple IRA. With a simple IRA, what you need to know is there are one of two matching structures that you need to incorporate. You would either choose to give everybody that was eligible a 2% contribution. So whether they may, may make their own contributions to the simple IRA, it does not matter. Everybody would get 2% of their salary. So if they make $100,000, you're gonna give them $2,000 per year. Or you can elect to give them a 3% contribution but they actually have to put in 3% of their own money in order to get that. And for my business owner clients, I'm almost always recommending that they go with the latter matching contribution here because most employees that are making 30, 40, or $50,000, even though we might encourage them to contribute, they won't end up contributing to the plan. And so you'll actually end up saving some money even though it's a higher matching structure, okay? So, so lower matching costs compared to some of the other plans that we're gonna talk about. The cons over here are that the contribution lim limits are relatively low. So you may be familiar with a 401k, we're able to put $19,500 in there. A simple IRA, we're only able to put $13,500 if we're under the age of 50. That climbs to $16,500 if you're over the age of 50. So if you wanted to put more away than that, the simple IRA would not be for you. So we'll, we'll go through an analysis on that. Uh, there's also very low eligibility rules. So almost every employee that you have is going to be able to join the plan. Essentially anybody who earned over $5,000 in either of the last two years, they are eligible. Again, as we look forward, some of these other plans that we'll talk about might require you to work a thousand hours to be eligible for the plan. But here, almost everybody is going to be eligible for the simple IRA. And if you do install a simple IRA, because again, maybe you're in year one or year two of your business, you have to make sure that you keep this open for two calendar years. So if you set it up this year, 2020 and 2021 is when you would have the simple IRA. You would not be able to have a 401k or a profit sharing plan until 2022. So uh, if you wanted to make higher deferrals, again, you'd have to wait till then. And so I just have this summarized here. This is best for a newer business owner who wants to make some sort of contribution, but they don't necessarily have stable cash flows yet. They don't necessarily know that they're gonna be able to put away 30, 40, or $50,000 away for retirement. So very common for a new business to have a simple IRA in place for say four or five years maybe, but eventually they will migrate to the Safe Harbor 401k as we'll talk about. So how does this work in practice? So this is again, the financial analysis here. Uh, the business owner, Let's just say they're making a $200,000 salary and we've got three employees who are all eligible for the plan. I'm gonna show you a worst case scenario, meaning that this is the most costly that this plan is going to be for you. Uh, so the owner puts away the full contribution, 13,500. They're also going to give themselves a 3% match, okay? So that'll bring their total contributions up to 19,500 for themselves. And then this is our worst case scenario because we're using the 3% max structure. So all employees are deferring 3% and we're gonna give them a 3% match. So they will get $3,600 in total from us. Now, if employee number three decides not to defer, that will save us $900. But again, for today's purposes, let's just say that they all do contribute to the plan and all these matches are going to be 100% vested. So if they leave our company and go somewhere else, we don't get that money back, it goes with them wherever they go, okay? And we'll talk about vesting as we go here, but just know that that is their money. So through my little financial analysis here, I'm gonna show you that the owner in this case, this is an individual filer, they're in the 32% federal bracket, 5% state of Massachusetts bracket, so all in, their bracket is 37%. They've put 19,500 away from themselves, so they're saving 37% on that, meaning that we're saving $7,215, okay, just on taxes. Now, I do want to acknowledge that later on in life, we are going to take this money out and we'll pay taxes at that time. So as I said earlier, typically the effective withdrawal rate is going to be taxed 7 to 10%. I'm just going to be very conservative today and say 10%. So it'll cost you $1,950 to withdraw that money. So your net tax savings is about $5,200 and you have, your investments are going to grow tax deferred. So you don't have to pay any capital gains or dividend taxes over these next 20 or 30 years. It just grows for you there. 
the employee cost uh, is going to be, um, actually should be about, uh, uh, yeah, $3,600. So your net benefit is gonna be about a little over $1,000 here. So I did a little math wrong there, but a little over $1,000. So you'll save some money by putting the plan in place and making sure that you max it out. So that looks like a pretty good example here for our simple IRA, okay? Let's now go to the Safe Harbor 401k. So the Safe Harbor, as I mentioned earlier in our webinar, the Safe Harbor bypasses the compliance tests that would have otherwise limited your deferrals. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. Basically, when you, uh, if you fail the compliance test with a traditional 401k, the IRS comes back and says, that $19,000 that you put away for yourself, you actually couldn't put that away and they give you a check back. Basically, you have to take money out of the plan. So we don't want that. We wanna have the Safe Harbor plan in place. The higher contribution limits allow us to put 19,500 away, plus another 6,500 if we're over the age of 50. Um, one of the pros in this case is that we have more rigid eligibility rules. So if you have a lot of part-time employees and you're concerned about the cost of those part-time employees, you might wanna skip, skip the simple IRA and go right to the Safe Harbor 401k because you can put a rule in place here that says if you work under a thousand hours, you're not eligible for the plan. And a thousand hours is basically 20 hours a week. So if you've got employees who are typically working 10 or 15 hours a week, they're not gonna be eligible and they will not be a cost to you as the business owner. On top of that, you can say they have to work here for one year and they have to have semi-annual entry points, meaning that if they start in February, and then they work one year to the following February, they're not actually gonna be able to join the plan until July, okay? So it's not like they join as soon as they're eligible. They have to wait for either January 1st or July 1st. So again, another way for you to save some money there. And then finally, I just have on the pro side that there is an option for Roth deferrals. So if you're a young business owner or you have employees who are really young and they wanna make contributions on an after-tax basis, Typically not recommended, but it is an option for some people uh, based on their personal financial plan. You can do Roth deferrals here, whereas you cannot do that on the simple IRA, okay? Uh, there are some costs to the Safe Harbor 401k plan. There are higher administrative, administrative costs. Uh, we have to hire what's called a third party administrator, and we have to hire a record keeper. So the record keeper is somebody who's holding the money in the previous examples, I had talked about Fidelity and Schwab, but they're too expensive for 401k plans. So we have many other four, uh, record keepers that we use for small business owners. And then the TPA is the people that are running the compliance tests on your retirement plan. So they help you to send out notices, they run the tests and they make the calculations on your matching contributions. There's a lot going on there. The TPA is a really important part of administering the 401k plan. All in, those are gonna cost you typically around $2,500 per year. Another con on this side is that we have a higher matching cost than the simple IRA. So we either have to give 3% to everyone who's eligible, which again might be someone who's worked over a thousand hours and worked for one year, or we give everybody 4% as long as they've, they've contributed 5% of their salary. So if they contribute 5%, we give them 4%. Again, that's about 1% higher than the two matching structures we talked about in the simple IRA. And then finally, there is a little bit more time needed to administer the plan because of these eligibility rules and because we have to fill out a census at the beginning of every year for our third party administrator. You are going to invest a little bit more time or your office manager is going to invest a little bit more time in vet, uh, administering the Safe Harbor 401k plan. Uh, so I just say that this is best for an established business uh, who wants to put at least 25 grand away for retirement. And again, whenever I'm talking with a business owner, that's really the question I'm starting with. How much extra money do you have that you're not gonna reinvest in the business that you wanna put away for yourself for retirement? That's gonna help really dictate what, which direction we go here. So let's go through an example on the Safe Harbor 401k. Uh, same numbers as before, uh, the owner making 200 grand, but now they're making a higher contribution to themselves. I've actually crossed out employee number three here because employee number three, let's just say they aren't eligible because they didn't work a thousand hours. And so they're part-time. Previously, they were making $30,000. So that might be somebody who was you know, less than part-time, less than a thousand hours. That saves us a little bit of money on the same 3% matching structure, okay? 
Again, that match is 100% vested. That cost is going to come out to $2,700. So similar figures here, except for, again, we get to contribute more money to ourselves, the business owner. We're going to save $9,400 there. The retirement uh, withdrawal is now going to be about $2,500. So our net tax savings is $6,800. Again, the employee cost, $2,700. We now have to add in a line here for the administrative costs, the record keeper and the TPA. So that's going to take away from our benefit. And in this example, the net benefit is about $1,600. So not a great uh, set of benefits here. Again, we talked about before, there are other reasons to put a 401k plan. But for yourself, just to max out the Safe Harbor 401k, I'm not going to provide a massive financial benefit for, for you. And that's where we really start to get onto the profits. Oh, I should just say that the 401k, as I mentioned earlier, we do have uh, these typical uh, eligibility setups, but you can make this more liberal if you want to. You can tell employees that instead of waiting one year, they can be eligible for the plan after six months, or maybe instead of working a thousand hours per year, they can work 500 hours and they'd be eligible. You're able to make it more liberal. This is just the most restrictive that you can do it. You can't say that you have to work here for two years. You can't say that you have to work over 1,500 hours. This is the most restrictive that you can make it. And again, this is typically how I set up my 401k plans because we're trying to keep costs down. But as I was starting to say earlier, the 401k, while by itself, may not add a lot of financial benefit to the business owner. Usually what we're going to do with the 401k plan is we're going to attach a profit sharing plan. And again, you can't attach a profit sharing plan to a simple IRA. You gotta have a 401k in order to do that. So very typical that once the business is somewhat stable, we're gonna set up a 401k with a profit sharing plan. The profit sharing plan is completely discretionary from year to year. So what is set in stone is that you're gonna to have to make those matching contributions that we talked about earlier, whether it's 3% or 4%, but at the end of every year, you may decide that we've had a great year. We're going to make extra contributions to the retirement plan. And let's just say in 2020, you decide to make the contribution. But in 2021, your year is not as profitable. You can decide not to make it in 2021. And then you can make the contribution in 2022. Uh, it's completely discretionary from year to year. That's an important concept to understand. What's also important to understand is it allows the business owner to put in up to $57,000 of contributions or 63,500 if you're over the age of 50. That's a massive amount of money. I mean, before we were talking about 20 to $25,000. Now we're more than doubling that, which is obviously going to more than double our tax benefit that we're saving by, by maxing out the plan. Additionally, we are gonna have costs. We'll talk about that in a second with profit sharing contributions but those profit sharing contributions that we make to the employees, they vest over a period of six years. So in order, if I give my employee number one $3,000, in order for employee number one to keep all $3,000, they're gonna have to work here for six years or more. If they leave after two years, they may only keep 20% of my total contributions. And then the portion of my contribution that they don't take with them, will not go back to me directly, but it will be used to offset future costs. So next year's profit sharing contributions, next year's matching contributions, or the operational expenses. It can be used for those kinds of things. And so that actually will save you some money down the road if you're a business that actually has a lot of employee turnover. But we also, you know, employee turnover, we don't want them to leave after two or three years. We'd like them to stay. And so this is also a way to say, hey, I guess I just gave you four or $5,000. I'd really like you to stay for a full six years and they'll be able to see the financial benefit of uh, staying here versus leaving for a competitor that doesn't offer profit sharing, okay? So the cons, there is a slight cost to a profit sharing plan. Usually you gotta pay about $500 per year just to run the calculations. And then uh, we, got, we are, as I mentioned, we are gonna have to make some contributions to the employees in order to get ourselves up to that $57,000 contribution. And this is a little bit more complicated, not something I'm gonna go into in too much depth, but based on the demographics of your business, we will set up a profit sharing formula. Uh, the most common ones that I use are either new comparability or integrated with social security. Just briefly, the new comparability is 
uh, an IRS profit sharing rule that allows an older business owner to favor themselves more uh, because they're approaching retirement. Uh, so if they if the business owner was 37 years old, we probably wouldn't use new comparability. Instead, we would use integrated with Social Security. That's a different profit sharing formula that essentially says that for people that are making over the Social Security wage base, which this year I believe is about $132,000, we're going to be able to favor those employees more than those that are uh, paying all the way into Social Security. Pro rata is another one, but I almost never use that. Pro rata is where we just give a 5% contribution flat to everybody, but that gets pretty expensive, and that's, that doesn't really usually make a lot of sense. So we go through your demographics, which are dates of birth, dates of hire, uh, and then salaries to dictate which is the appropriate profit sharing formula, and then hopefully we can find one that's favorable to you. So let's get to a little example here so we can see exactly how that plays out. In this case, I'm going to have my business owner because this business owner is typically a very profitable one. Uh, they're making $300,000 per year. They're putting in their $19,500. They're putting in their 3% match. And then in order to get up to the maximum, they're giving a profit sharing contribution of $31,500. Okay. Uh, the 3% the match is the same as it was before. So we've got a $2,700 cost here. Once again, employee number three, not eligible for the plan because they don't work a thousand hours. So it's $2,700 that they are 100% vested in. And then this might be what the profit sharing aspect of it looks. I've got to give $3,000 more to employee number one, $2,000 more to employee number two. Uh, so that $5,000, it is a cost and it is my worst case scenario, but importantly, it invests, over, it invests over six years. So again, if those employees leave after three years, or four years, they're only 40% or 60% vested, and then the rest of that money comes back to me for future costs, okay? So now the cost benefit of this is going to look a lot better. We put in $57,000 for ourselves. Now we're in a 40% combined tax, credit, tax bracket, excuse me, so we're saving over $22,000 in taxes. We will spend $5,700 when we withdraw that at retirement, so our net tax savings is $17,100. Our employee cost from the slide before is $7,700. Our administrative cost did go up by $500, so now that's $3,000. But once we net that out, we're still saving $6,400 per year. And again, I can't stop reminding you that this is the worst case scenario, because if you have a matching structure that requires people to contribute in order to get that match, or if you have employee turnover, you're gonna have a higher net benefit on a yearly basis, okay? So again, going back to that notion before, is it costing you money to not have the retirement plan in place? It might be the case if uh, your, you know, your demographics uh, are appropriate. So one of those things where we just have to run the numbers. So last retirement plan for today, cash balance plans, probably something that you're not very familiar with and probably shouldn't be considered until you're in your at least late 40s, but most likely early 50s as a business owner, and I'll get to why in a second. But if you're a really profitable business owner, you can now put away even more than the $63,000 that we were talking about in the 401k profit sharing model. Uh, business owners in this case can defer upwards of $200,000 away for themselves. Uh, so that's a massive amount of money, and obviously you've got to be a pretty stable business to be able to commit to that every year. Um, cash balance plans look, look, work a little bit differently than a 401k. In a 401k, both you and the employees, they invest, and they don't know what their investment results are going to be every year. You know, sometimes they're going to go up 10%, sometimes they're going to go down 5%, but it's all up to them. There's no, there's no liability on your sense as to how that goes. Uh, here, we're actually setting a defined benefit, which usually is a target interest rate of 5%. And so it does allow you a little bit of diversification in one sense because you're getting a 5% credit to your plan and so are the employees, a 5% credit. We're going to get back to the downside of that in a second, but just know that there is a defined credit here as to how much the benefits are going up by. And then for any employee contributions, we also have a vesting schedule. So if I give an employee a cash balance plan contribution, we use a three-year cliff schedule, meaning that if they leave any time before three years, they're not going to be able to keep any of that money. So if they leave after two years and I gave them $5,000, 
you know, they're not going to be able to take away any of that with them. But after three years, they do become 100% vested. Okay. So again, based on your own personal turnover in your business, you know, maybe someplace where you make contributions, but do get the money back for um, future costs. The cons to the cash balance plan are you are required to make annual contributions every year. So once we run the illustration and it says that you've got to put away $200,000 every year, you've got to be able to commit to that. And so for someone who's 35 years old and is putting a lot of money back into the business, a cash balance plan is just not going to make sense. But for someone who's 55 or 56 years old in a very high tax bracket and they're not opening new offices or you know having profits wildly swing from year to year, it is going to make a lot of sense. So just going to make sure we, we keep that in mind. In this case, the business owner actually takes on the risks of the uh, investments meeting that interest rate credit. So very important that the investment strategy here is uh, based around targeting that number. And at First National Corporation, we have an investment model that does that. It's called the Chappaquoit Conservative Model. Uh, so, and what that means is that every year, let's just say the investment model only got a 4% rate of return. If it did that, you would actually have to contribute a little bit more money to the plan to make up for that uh, uh, underperformance. If it got a 6% rate of return, your contribution would actually be a little bit less, which does sound good on the surface, but the whole point of this is that you're trying to get a taxable deduction by putting money into the cash balance plan. So we wanna be as close to 5% as possible. Luckily, there is a seven year period that you can wait to make up for under or over performance. So it's not like we're doing massive swings on a year to year basis, but it is just something that you don't wanna just be putting this into an S&P 500 index uh, and watching it go up and down wildly. It has to be catered to a 5% rate of return. And then finally, uh, contribution formulas do get much better with age. So uh, this can get very expensive for someone who's again, 35 years old, uh, but for someone who's 50, 55 or 60, it's gonna make a lot of sense. And so I'm gonna go through a real life illustration with you right now, which is a dental practice where the business owner and spouse are both working in the practice and they're very profitable. They're in their 50s and uh, the numbers look just great for them to be able to put this in place. So a lot of numbers here, but try to follow my mouse as we go along here. This is the business owner, he's age 53. All of their retirement ages are gonna be 65. Uh, under retirement plans, I think this business owner is making upwards of four or $500,000 per year, but we only consider $280,000 for these purposes under the uh, covered earnings. So what's most important to understand is that, you know, this business owner is gonna be putting away $173,000 to the cash balance plan for themselves. 1200 for his wife. They're both going to make 401k deferrals, in his case, 26 grand, in her case, 12 grand because she's on a $12,000 salary. So you can see over here that most of the money going into the plan, relatively 84%, is just going back to the uh, husband and wife, the, the business owners. And then we've got a series of other employer contributions, which are a decent amount of money here, um, but you know, lower on a percentage basis than what's going back to the original business owner. Okay, so this calculation gets run every year, basically gets run in January or February for the previous year. So today's calculations would be for 2019. And just to summarize this a little bit, this red line right here is gonna separate the husband and wife versus the uh, rank and file employees. And so the husband and wife, the amount that they're putting away for themselves is $212,800. The amount that they're putting away for the employees in total, this is 401k profit sharing, and cash balance plan is 38,000. So every year, roughly, this business owner is gonna have to commit to around $250,000 of contributions. But again, most of that is going back to their own accounts. So how does this work out math-wise? Well, the owner and spouse, they're in a 40% bracket. So because of that, their contributions times 40% is going to save them $85,000 in taxes, okay? Uh, again, they will eventually pay about $21,000 when they take it out, when they're retired, okay? So their net tax savings eventually will be $63,840. Their employee cost is around 38 grand. The administration cost, in our last example, it was $3,000. We've now added another 3,000 because it's a cash balance plan. So we're up to six grand a year, but the net benefit this year 
is $19,637. But I started this because this business owner is age 53. And I can just tell you that this business owner will be on what's called a new comparability profit sharing formula. And as that business owner becomes age 55, age 57, age 60, the percentage of contributions going to him and his wife versus the rank and file is just going to get higher. And these savings are going to become much higher. And as a reminder, if employees do leave in the first three years, those cash balance plan contributions will come back to the business owner. If they leave in the first six years, some of that profit sharing contribution will come back to the business owner. So again, this is a worst case scenario that by putting it in place, they'll have a net benefit of $20,000 per year while also being able to invest in retirement without capital gains or dividend taxes, okay? So these are some really big numbers to understand, and we've really hit the gamut here. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of different kinds of uh, business owners in this webinar today, uh, some that are just starting out, some that have been in business for a long time. And so it really is important to run the numbers on your own business uh, to dictate which kind of retirement plan makes sense. And also to make sure we get into your financial plan as well to see you know how long you're going to be working for and and whether you're going to be expanding your business or whatnot so just as a little a bit about us too to make sure you understand kind of where we're coming from again our role as a fiduciary is to be your advocate so we're identifying and benchmarking fees across these different providers you know we're going to get to the different providers that we work with but a whole different set of them both on the custodian ppa and investment side we're performing an investment analysis for you. Again, there's a legal liability there when you run a retirement plan to make sure that your investments are prudent for your participants. So we have a whole process to make sure that, that, that um, the investments do meet that objective. Uh, we're developing an educational campaign. So we talk specifically to your employees and educate them about the retirement plan. They can't call Fidelity or Schwab or Mass Mutual and get advice because the custodians don't act as a fiduciary. First National Corporation, the investment advisor, we're acting as the fiduciary there. Um, we're looking at different providers. So small business owners that have five employees may eventually become business owners who have 25 employees. That might mean starting with one record keeper, but eventually migrating to a different record keeper because they've grown in size and there's just different players in every market. We're very familiar with them. And then meeting, maintaining meeting minutes, again, for regular, regulatory purposes for the 401k plan. And just to emphasize that, again, a big point here is that we are provider and fund agnostic. So uh, at this point, I think we work with about 70 or 80 different retirement plans, about 50 of those are 401k plans. And they really are across all of these providers and more. There's more than are just on the screen here today. We don't care where they're at. We just wanna make sure that the cost makes sense for you. And so we're happy to do that sort of analysis and solicit proposals on your behalf. And then as far as investments go, we have a whole process every quarter. You get reports from us every quarter to show how the investments are performing, especially against their peers. And then we will outline whether we think a mutual fund, let's just say in the large cap growth space is underperforming and we will swap mutual funds out when that is happening. So a very active process here to not only make sure that your investments are well taken care of, but again, take care of the regulatory and compliance issues that are around retirement plans, okay? So that wraps our, our webinar today. I wanna just give you a little bit more resources to visit. fncadvisor.com gives you more information about First National Corporation. If you happen to be a dentist, which are a lot of clients at Schwartz & Schwartz, feel free to click on this dentist tab here and you'll see a free ebook that I've written. It's about a year, year and a half old now, but still very relevant for a lot of the topics that you might be going through, around 80 pages, and you can read it on a Kindle and go through the chapters that, again, are relevant for you. So feel free, again, whether you're a dentist or not, to visit that fncadvisor.com slash dentist tab. You'll just put in your email, and then I'll email that ebook out to you uh, for your, for your uh, reading pleasure. And again, if you have any questions either on this webinar or other things about retirement plans, uh, my contact information is here. It's very simple, alex at fncadvisor.com. But feel free to go to our blog or connect with me on LinkedIn and you'll see a lot of content that uh, I put up there as well. So again, everybody, uh, stay safe uh, for these next few weeks. Hope everybody enjoyed the webinar and we'll hopefully see you one month from now for our last uh, boot camp webinar as part of our uh, affiliation with Schwartz and Schwartz Accountants. Thanks again, everybody. Take care.